All right, this is the first device test of uh, a new terephilic acid based formula that is safe. Um, I mean, as safe as it gets, I should say. Quick flashback to a 50 gram loose powder test. Well, that's great. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of a TPA-based smoke, which is one that could be copied and it's an easy, it's only, it's only got four ingredients or five ingredients, but I'm going to compare that side-by-side -side with an HC smoke that I also made. However, the HC smoke is highly toxic. Uh, it's not acutely toxic, but it's uh, prolonged exposure is not good. That's why the military phased them out of use for training at least. However, what I'm gonna try and do is launch a drone and get a side-by-side -side view of the two uh, being used against each other. However, this is a first time test for the TPA. I do not know how it will work in the container. Um, so maybe actually I'll just do one at a time, uh, starting with the TPA. So I'm gonna set up, get a drone up in the air <clears throat> and uh, get this rolling. Uh, the weather is absolutely bizarre. It's been intermittently raining and then sunny in between. So um, hopefully we'll have decent weather for the drone. And uh, the wind speeds might be a little high, but... Oh, there's a deer. Look at that. Oh, and the baby deer. Get the hell out of here. I gotta flip this around. Hi, little buddy. Hi. No, I'm not gonna eat you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna lay down a fire blanket and do the testing on them, uh, on one of those. Uh, it is super windy and that's just the way it's gonna be. But, so we won't have any lingering, but I'm gonna get a drone up in the air and see if we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the output. Okay, first is the HC smoke to establish a baseline. That was awesome. Awesome. Ah, it's safe to say that burned right through the fire blanket. Okay, this is the new TPA smoke. New formula. This is my first time testing it. I have no idea how this is going to go. So that's flaring up. It takes a while to get started. Hopefully that flare-up will die down. That is strange.
cool. The TPA one is not bad to breathe. I mean, I wouldn't go put your mouth on it, but. Okay, so. Uh, so the TPA one kind of sucked and that was a clear, clear uh, loser. So um, I think we probably need to add more potassium chlorate and uh, improve the baffling design. We might have to shrink the exit orifice, but it is, uh, a little bit promising it's not I don't know nothing to write home about but we got to figure something out that's safe so the quest continues so I'm just by this new lake I found I'm just here practicing gratitude and manifesting abundance there's a few things that went wrong with that initial TPA test and one of them was the flare-up the other was the fact, you know what? I don't even know what the freaking problem was, but we're just kind of trying things and seeing why they work or don't work. What I'm gonna try in this experiment is not quite pellet, is not pelletized, but it's gonna be a loose powder. There will be no central hole, uh, no central core going down the middle. And well, I'll just show you. <laughs> Yeah, that sh blew up. So here I added pop rivets. You could use screws also to reinforce the bottom to create a matrix uh, of plaster. Actually, not quite sure what made me cackle like a dolphin there but the problem with this one is that you can see by these massive spray patterns there's one just above the device and then there's gonna be another huge spray out over there right behind that smoke cloud so that is dispersal of the dry mix it is not going through the combustion and is not being dispersed properly so everything you see on the ground is not in the air which is bad If you're watching this section of the video and you hear me talking right now, it means that we've accomplished our objective and we have created a low toxicity, as safe as can, as safe as can be, homemade, professional caliber device. And here's how to make it. This is TPA. Here is the mix for that. I have gone over it on, in many videos. The TPA mix is compressed inside of this cylindrical canister. I finally gave up on the Tiki Torch can for these TPA compositions because they really need to be compressed and they really need a hollow core. So I'm going to throw in some plaster of Paris on this top section here and we'll get started on the ignition system. All right, here's that plaster. Um, I always add salt to the water before, just regular table salt. Uh, I add that to the water before mixing it because it expedites the curing. Now this has a little bent kind of 
bead or like this little groove which will help hold this plaster in place when it's under pressure. This honestly is a perfect canister um, for this kind of, for this need. It's great. All right, so that is that. We're gonna let this cure. And now we'll go into the ignition system. It's a mousetrap style in ignition. This is quarter inch time fuse. This is from pyrochemsource.com. Um, you can also get it from skylighter.com. However, Skylighter has extremely expensive shipping and their time fuse has a smaller powder core. So uh, it is a little bit more unreliable when it comes to igniting secondary fuses that are cross matched. So what I've done is I've cut this at an angle and then I kind of just cut the tip there. And then I will trim, I will kind of cut this back a little. So now this is the powder core, right? And because it's cut at an angle, it has a higher surface area, which increases the probability that it will catch fire or it will pass fire or take fire. Now I'm using a quarter inch crimp ring from the coaxial, it's near coaxial cable at, at Home Depot uh, in that department near like uh, the electrical stuff. Uh, quarter inch crimp ring. It is not labeled, the size of it is not denoted on the package, but I think it's a quarter inch internal diameter. All right, so now I'm just slipping this over this crimp ring. So this acts as an ignition cup. <clears throat> Push that on and now activate it with some CA glue or some activator. And then we can trim the excess glue here so it fits down a fuse. So I attempted to make these fuses uh, with crushed up Strike Anywhere matches and regular matches. Trial three. God damn it. I don't even know what trial this is. God damn it, son of a Give me a fucking break, bro. Okay, so the point of this is that substituting match heads does not create a reliable fuse. Well, that's good news because I was going to actually say that if it worked. I was going to say that you can use those instead of, you know, buying the ignition kits. And I figured I would, you know, honesty trumps profit in my mind, at least in this case. But the truth is, is that they kind of suck. And here is the ignition composition or from that kit, kit that I sell. So we have some of that. We're going to drip in a few drops of nitrocellulose lacquer. love these silicone mixing cups. I got them at like Marshalls or something and they are awesome. All right, so we take this little blob and we just shove it on in there. We want to push it down so it makes def it makes definite contact with the uh <clears throat> with the powder core of the time fuse and then we let that sit a little bit. You can put it in front of a fan, it will expedite it. Nitrocellulose lacquer base is acetone, so that evaporates pretty quickly. I'm gonna just put this in front of the fan for like two seconds. 
while I mix up this, not that one, uh, the striker composition. So take this stick, take this cup and flip it inside out. Take some of the striker composition here, scoop it in. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Full, full transparency, here is the formula for the ignition composition. Here is the formula for the striker composition. Moving on. So we have a little bit of striker composition right here. Go take a drop or two of acetone, or of nitrocellulose. That's actually, I'll do one more. All right, now we take this time fuse and we just paint this on to the top of that. So now there is the striker composition which contains potassium chlorate and then there's a layer on top of that of the striker composition which contains red phosphorus. So when you mix and agitate or strike, um, it causes the, the red phosphorus excites and jumps up to a very unstable tetrahedron, which is white phosphorus. And that spontaneously ignites because it's so wildly unstable, just like my mental health. Then that will subsequently ignite the ignition composition within this little cup here. And once that ignites, it ignites a powder core of the time fuse that burns down. And then, you know, there you have it. So the way that mousetrap ignitions work, I also have a video on this. We're going to remove this from this M18 body. Pin is pulled. Okay, this is not cocked, though. There's this little flappy thing here, which is the mousetrap spring. And that swings down and strikes usually a primer. The next stage of this process is to deal with this bad boy. They say, academically speaking, that your exit orifice should be a roughly one half the diameter container that you're using. I don't know if that's completely true. It would obviously depend on the volatility or the, vi or the aggressiveness of the composition you're using. In other words, basically how much oxidizer you have, but whoa, that was not put in very well. Holy moly. All right, so I'm gonna just gonna drill this right down the middle. Uh, definitely better to use paddle bits for the record. Okay, that's as far as I'm getting. Now, what I'm gonna do is embed the fuse. So, okay, new formula, this one. It is a great fuse primer. However, I will say that it is a wee bit aggressive. Here is a sample. It has potassium perchlorate, 70%, magnallium, 20%, and 10% red gum. Red gum is normally used as a binder. However, in this case, it is used as a fuel in addition to a binder. Magnallium is a combination of, it's an alloy between magnesium and aluminum. And this is the aggressiveness level of that straight up. That might be a wee bit much. All right, so here we go. See, it burns pretty aggressively and it burns very hot and because of the magnesium. Um, here, I dampened it down. I added 7% magnesium carbonate. And here is the level of aggressiveness of this one. See, it's, it's subdued a little bit. Now, if you notice uh, in that last fail video, um, I don't know, maybe it was the one before that fail. Yes. Oh, no, it was the last fail video that you guys are seeing. I've done probably twice as many tests as you're actually seeing. 
Um, and if you know, I'd have an hour and a half long video if I showed all my failures. But you get the idea. There were a lot of them. Um, one of the issues, the, the bottom of the cam blew out because the, the primer that I was using burned too aggressively. It just like boom, blew the whole bottom of the can out. So I decided, among other things, um, I added some magnesium carbonate to this red gum uh, primer, and it just tones it down a little bit. This is the ramrod that we will be using to secure the, and I'm also using a green fast burning visco fuse because I feel like it, and I, the white fast burning visco that I normally use is, has been burning super aggressively and I think that's contributing to these cans popping also. So I'm going to just tie a knot in here and then I'm going to mix some of this nitrocellulose lacquer into this primer composition here. All right, so now I'm gonna load this into a syringe, which also comes in those kits. For the record, just saying. Cut that tip a little bit. And just load some of this into there, along the edges. So if you bank anything, when you're loading up one of these syringes, if you bank it on the sides, It'll allow all the air to escape by the time the plunger hits the bottom of the syringe, which is cool because then you don't get bubbles screwing up your stuff. All right. We have that in here. We're going to probably come back to some of this for the fuse, priming that fuse just in case. Just leaving that wet there for like two seconds. Um... You can also get some nitrocellulose lacquer on here to help bond it. This is not a exact. All right. So now I'm going to shove this down to the bottom. We want this composition to burn from the bottom up. Okay. So now we can load this plunger up. See how that works there. Nope, never mind. There's a huge freaking air bubble. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. Um, I'm just shoving this primer into there. And then we're going to ram all of this down with my first Ticonderoga. Twist it and pull up. And then we'll just let this sit and dry. Um, I'm taking this fuse or this uh, primer and I'm going to just coat a section of this visco fuse that will be being cross matched through the time fuse. So this is just priming a fuse, okay? In those kits, so all of so just for the record, these igni this ignition composition here that's in those kits, I double that up. I give you 14 grams of it instead of you, you only need five to make 50 of the pull string igniters. Um, but these kits, you know, I doubled the, the amount of, actually I more than doubled the amount of necessary uh, ignition composition just for things like this, priming fuses. You can also use this in lieu of this red gum primer. This is just an experiment. Um, so anyway, this is, this is primed here. This is, the edges of this are coated for the time fuse. And we'll let this core dry and move on to this time fuse. And I'm going to punch this fuse here. You can also split it with a utility knife down the middle and then tie a constrict and then wrap the fuse around or the time fuse core. Uh, wrap both sides of the split time fuse around the the visco fuse, or tip, typically it's a, it's a cross cross match or black match, you know, with firework making. There's like a specific way to do this stuff. And I'm going to trim this down.
run this through this hole. Jeez, that was rough. Damn. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a dab of Cieglo. Damn, that is ugly. It would be really cool if you didn't tell anybody about this. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, so now we're going to plunge this down again. Announcement. Add magnesium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate to that center core. Fill that up with one of those two carbonates and then put the cap on. It'll suppress the initial flare-up. Put this down in there and seat this right on here. First, I'm going to glue this cap on. All right, I'm going to hold this in place until that cures, and then we're good to go. I don't need to show you how to put the spoon on. The good thing about this size device is that it will fit inside of pockets. You know, or I should say it'll fit inside of pouches. Holy crap, that thing is still going.